Just hurry, John. I'm doing what I can. Did you call? Yes, I did. Drive faster. We'll save him. Erica, wait for backup. Screw backup. They won't be here in time. We've got to find the cane killer before he hurts Scott. Mount Auburn Cemetery. This is the place where that bastard told me Scott would be. He said to come alone, but John wouldn't let me. That's John's car. The gate is secure with a padlock. I've got no key, no time to get one. Why is this locked? The cemetery should still be open! They're about to close for the night. They must have locked this gate before some of the others. We can go around to the east end. No, we won't have time. That won't work there. I can't open it with my hands and I don't have a key. I can't open it with my hands, and I don't have a key. I'm sure McAdams can't wait to hear what we're doing. I'll take the blame. Sure, that'll make it all better, especially since he took you off the case. My brother isn't there. I don't give a rat's ass what McAdams thinks. Right. What is it, Red? Just my... my intuition, I guess. Weird. There's a trail here. These look like fresh footsteps. The trail dies out quickly. I wonder... I could try using my intuition. It's always been good, but now that Scott's in danger, it's crazy strong. Not sure that I can trust it.
The trail dies out quickly. I wonder... I could try using my intuition. It's always been good. After I get my hands on this bastard, he's going to be busy reassembling his face. Someone must have left this here. Let's see. A hammer and a wire cutter. They could come in handy. Killer was digging here. I can't dig with my bare hands. to the statue. I can't break it off with my bare hands. It figures. I'm in a cemetery, and the only shovel in sight is stuck in a marble hand.
please be all right. John, come with me. Sure, Red. What did you want? Let's take a look around. John, will you take this and dig? I know there's something here. And you take your coffee with two sugars and no milk? John, this isn't funny. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Not sure, but I'm about to find out. There's a sort of slot in the back of this thing. Seems like it could fit somewhere. Scott, please be here. What the hell? John! This is definitely the Kane Killer's work. Only read blood. What the hell does that mean? This has got to be the place. You think he's watching us? Are you kidding me? The question is, how exactly did he set this whole thing up? I don't know. I hope we're still in time. This must be the right piece. Here goes nothing. Erica, we should wait for backup. I may not have your intuition, but even I can see. This is a really bad idea. There's no time! Scott's life depends on me now. What am I doing wrong? Come on, Erica, think. Do you know what that is? Looks like a pressure plate. Stop! John, let me do this. That's it! Whoa! It's a trap! Get out of there! Only read blood. Of course. He's watching us. And only my blood will open this door. That's ridiculous. He might not even be here right now. I'm not taking that chance. Step off that crazy thing, now! You stay right there! Whoa, 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 Red! Stay the hell back, John. Eric, think this through. He has my brother in there. My baby brother. I appreciate what you're doing, but step the fuck 
back because I'm doing this. Fine. Erica, it's not too late to think this through. I'm fine. God damn it! Why do you have to be so damn stubborn? Get me out of here. Oh, Scott. What has he done to you? <sighs> this trap is for me. Scott and I were the cane killer's newest targets. The bastard. He takes siblings. Candelabra. It fits his M.O. He likes to decorate everything. As if it's some sort of ritual, it's sick. Having these so close to the curtains isn't a very good idea. These curtains look pretty old and flimsy. Talk about a fire hazard. This seems to be connected to the trap. Maybe I can deactivate it from here. This device is even more complicated than the ones he used in the other murders. Oh, Scott. What has he done to you? I'm not trained for disabling these. Maybe I can call Terence. He's good with this stuff and he studied Kane's previous traps. Hello? Terence, what's your location in ETA? Uh, we're on route 15 minutes. That's too late! I have one of his traps going off in T-10. Um, is it attached to Scott? Send me a picture. Scott? 
See it? Yeah, he's used something similar before. You have to cut the wires in the reverse order from the way they were connected. How the hell am I supposed to know how it was connected? I'm sorry, I, I don't know what else to tell you, Erica. Okay, just hurry. Think, Erica, think. Erica. I'm figuring this out. Hang in there.
Scotty. We're getting out of here. By the time you find him, you won't be able to do anything about it. You'll be blind from staring at that screen in the dark. I like it this way. I can be half asleep and work at the same time. Egg sandwich? It's two in the morning. Exactly. Time for breakfast. Did you hear? Davies closed the cane killer case. I heard. And yet, here you still are at 2 a.m. I'm just... Making sure everything's in order before it's sent to the archives. Why are you here? I pick up my phone in the middle of the night. Apparently you don't. Oh, crap. I didn't hear it ringing. Davies? I'm sure it isn't pretty. No, it ain't. Lots of blood and guts, they say. <laughs> or maybe I dreamed it. You sure you don't want your egg sandwich? You can have it. Come on, Skippy. Davies will have our asses if we don't show up ten minutes ago. You know how I hate that name, don't you? I do, Skippy. Man, that egg sandwich smells good. You sure? <laughs> Let's go. I haven't seen him before. Must be new in the force. So why are we taking this case again, John? It looks like regular police work to me. Beats me. Davies requested it.
Excuse me, officer? This is a crime scene, ma'am. I'm going to ask you to please step back unless you have official business here. Excuse me, ma'am. This is a crime scene? Special Agent Reed, this is Special Agent McCoy, FBI. We're here on official business. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't know. You can go in, sir, ma'am. <laughs> you must be new. You're far too polite. Officer Jonathan Duffer. Yes, I just recently graduated from the academy. It's an honor to serve the city. Ah, fresh blood. Doesn't that make you all warm and tingly inside? No, but I'm sure this crime scene will. What exactly happened in there? I hear they found a body hanging. Murder, apparently. I don't know much else. Like I said, I just started at the force, so they have me standing guard. You're gonna have to talk to your people inside. I don't know why the FBI was called in. <laughs> You're not the only one wondering. Thank you, officer. Who found the body? A bum found the body, but uh, he didn't see anything. Who interrogated him? I heard it was Director Davies herself. Uh, you work for her, don't you? Must be quite an honor. She's something, all right. Any other witnesses? Nobody heard or saw anything from what I've heard. Ain't this our lucky day? Thank you, officer. No problem, agent, and I'm sorry again. Never apologize for doing your job, kiddo. Yes, sir. I'll let John socialize. I'll go do some work. The hell is that supposed to mean? Finally, you get your ass down here. My ass was busy closing Scott's file. Look around and then come talk to me. And John, please wipe your mouth. I can smell that egg sandwich all the way over here. Hey, it's a good sandwich, ain't it? What do you say, Galaga? Sure, if you want to drop dead from a heart attack. <laughs> hey man, I'll back you up. They don't know what they're missing. Davies. Not now, Reed. Go do your job. Is this from the victim? It seems to be from their fingertips. The painting looks fresh. Well, there are too many people here. I'll look at it later.
grasp on it lately. It's slowly gotten worse and worse. Are you all right? I'll manage. Something fell down there. Hey, John, any idea what this is? No clue. Ask Terrence. Hey, buddy. How's it going? The Erica herself. I'm trying to finish quickly so I can go get some freaking sleep. I'm a tech geek. I shouldn't be doing all this crap. Where's your team? Uh, there's a lot of shit hitting the department right now, so we're low on manpower. How's it hanging, McCoy? Weird to see the FBI all over this. I don't make the rules, pal. Have you gotten any prints? <sighs> Nothing. It's super clean. This person knew what they were doing. Been searching around, but I can't even find a partial. How can the guy who did this struggle so much and not leave any traces behind? The guy knows his shit. Any luck identifying our John Doe? Nope. Nothing in the database? Uh, I wish it was that simple. Didn't you look at the body? What about it? Oh, get this. The problem is not that the guy isn't in the database. The problem is that the killer cut the skin off the fingers of our John Doe. All I've been able to find is just blood markings everywhere. Thank you, asshole, for making my life easier. DNA? I'll have to take a look at that tomorrow. So any theories on how the guy was hanged? There are a few marks on the body. They aren't from a struggle with a killer, per se, but my theory is that whoever did this had a hell of a time stringing that big guy up. Drag marks? Exactly. It wasn't easy getting him up there. So we're looking at someone smaller than the victim. Probably an average build? Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you know what this is? It was under the shelf. <laughs> no freaking clue. Looks old. Is it evidence? Are you confiscating it if I say it is? Maybe. Does it have any prints? Ah, screw it. Keep it. But bring it to me tomorrow. Oh, and keep it clean. You said it looks old? Yeah. I've seen something similar. Ask me another day. When there's coffee. Terrence! Really, I... I, I don't know. Do whatever you have to do with it and bring it back. Terrence, did you notice that wall over there? The paint looks fresh. Yeah, I saw that. I'll have to call someone to come here tomorrow and take a closer look. I seriously don't have time for all this work. Have you talked to Davies about the lack of resources? <laughs> she knows this is BS. I heard that. Uh, all good, boss. I, I got it. Hang in there, buddy. Yeah. Reed? McCoy? Oh, joy. Come talk to me when you're done asking around. We better make sure we know our facts before talking to Davies. Gallagher? Reed? What do we have here? White male, mid-40s, cause of death, strangulation. So he was definitely killed by the hanging? No doubt about that. He suffered a very agonizing death. The cerebral hypoxia was as slow as it could have been. English? Deprivation of oxygen to the brain.
Any signs of struggle? Not exactly, but there are marks on the body. Bowlby can fill you in on his theories. Any idea how someone got him up there without struggling? I can't say for sure without running an autopsy. Look at the spots in the shirt. Most likely saliva. In victims of hanging, the tongue protrudes by the pressure on the jaw, causing it to dry. My best guess is that the saliva was then caused by some kind of a drug used prior to the suffocation. The killer must not have been strong enough to do this without drugging the victim. John Doe here is very well built. I couldn't take him. Are you kids done theorizing? I'd like to get back to my work. A very slow death, you say? I believe he was not dropped, but rather raised with the rope. Add to that the height of this table, just tall enough for the victim to reach it with his toes from time to time, allowing for the compression of the trachea to stop every once in a while. What about loss of consciousness? The weight of the body causes the compression of the airway, arteries, and jugular veins. If done correctly, the victim should pass out in a matter of seconds. But in this case, you can see how his brain expanded. Look at the veins in his forehead. He stayed conscious for at least 30 to 45 minutes, maybe more. <laughs> Whoever did this must have really hated the guy. He also defecated. It's another sign of prolonged cases of suffocation. So that's the smell. And Davies pinned it on my sandwich. <laughs> Lovely as ever, John. What else can you tell us? I'm trying to finish my work, if you don't mind. Stop by the morgue tomorrow and we can talk more. And bring something to keep Bowlby entertained and stop him from coming down to interrupt me when I'm working. Hey, I heard that. Good. When did they move forensics? They just moved him into our building this week. Temporarily, they said. Thankfully, it's only him. I'd go crazy if they brought the whole forensics freak show. Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? Excuse me now. I'd like to finish this so I can get back home to my cats. I'll bug you again if I need more info. Try to be quick. Hey, Gareth. Hello, Agent Reed. Reed, we're paying for the damn cell phone so that you take the call when I ring you. Is that clear? Now, what have you found? How did the victim die? Suffocation. Who is our John Doe? We can't identify the victim yet because the victim's fingertips have been skinned. Any leads on the killer? The killer struggled with the hanging of the victim which leads us to believe that the killer is smaller and skinnier than the victim. That's it? That's it. I may point out, however, that Terence is being overworked, so he's not exactly at the top of his game. When I have questions about how to run my branch, I'll ask you. Anything to add, McCoy? No. Wonderful. Not only are you too late, you're also worthless. Go get some sleep and get your asses to work tomorrow, early. I want to see you in my office as soon as you're in, Reed. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Why are we taking this case? Tomorrow. Now get out of here. Erica. Sir? How are you holding up? I'll be fine. Good. Get some rest. I have a bad feeling about this one. You called? Erica, I know how much you care about what happened to Scott, but I'm afraid I'm gonna have to let you off the case. Don't do this to me, Davies. I have to. 
It's been three years. This is bullshit! I'm so close to getting somewhere. No, Erica, you're not. I've seen your reports. You're going in circles. Did my dad put you up to this? Brian's worried about you. Listen, I understand how much this means to you, but it has to stop. I put my job on the line, letting you take on a case in which you're so personally involved. And I did it out of respect for your dad. But it's time to move on, Erica. Even your dad agrees. I can't. You have to, Erica. I'm afraid that's an order. Ugh. Are you all right? I just need a minute. Ugh. What is? My, my visions. I told you to go see someone about that. Shh, they'll hear you. Do you still have that card I gave you? Yes, John, I do. But the whole hocus pocus thing, it's not me. Listen, Rose runs an antique shop. That thing you found, Terrence says it was an antique. So go ask her about it and while you're there, maybe bring up these visions of yours. What can it hurt? If that will shut you up, fine. I'll go tomorrow. Go now. She's a night owl. Closed in the mornings, open all night. Great. That sounds perfectly normal. Go on. I'll hit your ride to the office. Hello, my dear. I could feel the spirits were active tonight. I knew someone would appear. Yeah, that'd be me. So, does the shop have the identity problem, or is it you? Very observant. What's a pretty girl like yourself doing out at the witching hour? Special Agent Reed, I'm here to ask you some questions about an antique. My favorite subject, Agent. And you can call me Rose, my dear. So, you sell antiques? You do not just sell antiques, my dear. I like to see it as a way to preserve these beauties through the generations. But yes, this is an antique shop, among other things. Like what? Reading a crystal ball? If a customer wants to talk to their dear departed mother or father, I am happy to help. Right. Do you read the tarot, too? <laughs> I make an honest living agent. Nothing wrong with that. Other than extorting people's hard on money, no. I give people what they want. I know when people need healing and how to help them heal. Right, my dear? I wanted to ask you about this. Ah, that is strange. What is? This is only a piece of the toy. Ah, yes, it is a Le Pondu, or at least very similar to one. Precious things. Ah, beautiful. A, a what? Le Pendu. It was a line of toys that had their roots in the French Revolution. It is said that those in high society use them at secret parties. Mysterious, do you not think? And some say they use these toys to scare their children into understanding what justice could do to them if they did not follow the rules. Horrible, is it not? 
So why would a toy like that appear in a crime scene last night? That is your job, my dear. Could this have come from this shop? I have not sold one in a while, but they are not as uncommon as you may think. Do you know of any other shops that may sell them? Toy shops, other antique stores. I bet they show up in those online auctions too. As I said, they are not all that uncommon. I am sorry, my dear. What else can you tell me about it? The artifact is indeed old, but it has been modified. The wood is very old, and so is the varnish, but the cuts are new. Is this the only piece you found? Yes. So there are more? Well, yes. And I would say these cuts were made to fit into some other piece. Do you carry these? There is one right there. Thanks for the help. Any time, my dear. Now, tell me the real reason why you are here. Something's been happening to me. A friend suggested I talk to you about it. Go on. I am listening. I keep having... Visions? <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm not exactly comfortable. Listen, my dear, you can tell Rose whatever is happening to you. These old bones have seen it all and heard it all. How do you know? Did John McCoy call you? Jean McCoy? Where do I know that name from? Ah, yes, Jean, another FBI agent. More easy going. He came here a few years back. Poor soul, he was utterly lost. He loved my coffee, and we used to sit at that table over there, talking for hours. I would guess you are the girl he told me about. I wish he'd let me deal with this on my own. Sometimes we do need a push, my dear. And here you are, taking the right steps. When did they start? The visions. I will tell you what. Go and sleep on it. Visit your brother tomorrow. Wait, how do you know? Sleep on it. And if you are ready tomorrow, come back here and I will show you a few things. All right? We'll see. I could stay up driving all night. <laughs> I could use the time to think. But I'd better get some sleep tonight. I have a feeling tomorrow is going to be a long day. <laughs> Ready to go. I should see what Davies wanted. So many heroes. We keep awards in there. A few of the top shot ones are mine. That's our printer. Old, but still works. Hi, Gwen. How are you? Erica! Working hard. You know, lots of things to file. But hey, can't complain. Still have my job. <laughs> yeah. So, what's up? So, how's it been handling the evidence room? Crazy, isn't it? Davy said it's only until we get out of this mess. Cutbacks and all. Wish this came with the raise, but what can you do? Anyways, if you have any requests, I can get it for you. Hmm, 
I'll keep that in mind. So, how's it been handling the evidence room? Crazy, isn't it? Davy said it's only until we get out of this mess, cutbacks and all. Wish this came with the raise, but what can you do? Anyways, if you have any requests, I can get it for you. Hmm, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Gwen. Anytime. Let's see what's new today. Hey, Erica. Sully? Davies told me that she had to leave as soon as she got here, to let you know. Thank you. She said she needed to talk to you about that antique you found yesterday. How did she know? Terrence. Yeah, she was mostly talking to herself. You know how she does that. She had a similar piece or something. Really? Interesting. Need to see this thing. I'm sure. Are you avoiding me? Sully, I have 10,000 things in my head right now. Can we talk later? Sure. You want to grab lunch later? Um, not today, Sully. I really am busy. Maybe some other day? Yeah, you got a hell of a case. By the way, you left your jacket at my place the other night. Uh, I can bring it by, or maybe you could... Yeah, bring it by. Sure, no problem. Ugh, that looks so unappetizing. Read. Terence mentioned to me that you have found a piece of an antique last night at the crime scene. I was sent one anonymously last week. I gave it to Terence. It's not the first weird thing I've gotten lately, either. But I wrote them off up until last night. I'll show it all to you when I get back later today. For now, I have to go take a look at something important. Davies. What does she have in her office? I have to get into Davy's office somehow. I don't have anyone to write to right now. Hey babe, we haven't spent time together in a while. Was wondering if you'd like to rent a movie and watch it at my place this weekend. Sully. Sully, how many times do I have to tell you not to call me babe? Cool. I could use a couple hours away from all this. Figures. Dad avoids visiting Scott. Maybe that's why he decided to bury him there, so that he could be as far away from his memory as possible. My drawer, it's a mess of a place.
I have to get into Davy's office somehow. It's locked. I'm going to have to get creative if I want to get in there. Good morning, John. <laughs> What's so good about it? You are an iridescent ray of sunshine today. Did you have your coffee yet? <laughs> Shit, no coffee will fix this. What's up? All this paperwork that fell on my desk today, like a goddamn ticker tape parade. I'd offer my help, but... But? Don't really want to, sorry. Bring me some donuts if you want to help. Will a bag of chips from the vending machine do? Get out of here! Has Sully said anything about me? Look, I'm not good at this lovey-dovey shit, but we were Joey's the other night, throwing him back, and the kid opened up. He's confused. Well, I don't blame him. I have fun when I'm with him, it's just... I feel like I'm cheating. You mean because of... You know. It's one thing when you touch a body and find details that help on a crime scene, but when someone holds your hand and you see him looking at penthouse magazines and... Don't all guys do that? It's not that. I feel intrusive. If I find things that I don't like later, too bad. But I want to get there at my own pace. <laughs> I don't want to know his parents before I even have the chance to feel it's going too fast when he asks me to meet him. Man, I don't know what it'd be of me if every time I kiss my ex-wife I saw my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on a good day. Have you seen Davies? Sully told me she left early. Got reeled in by something, I suspect. Great. Know when she's coming in? Nope. Now stop asking questions. <laughs> it's my job. Well, stop being so good at it. You keep a copy of Davies' office keys, no? Why? She sent me an email mentioning something about strange things she's been receiving in the past few days. So, I figured that since she isn't here... You just sneak into her office and look around? Oh, come on, John. I don't have time to stand around until she comes back. Even if I didn't think that was a stupid idea, you're out of luck. I lost those keys. And don't tell anyone either. Had any new thoughts on the hanging last night? <laughs> you see my desk? A man cannot think straight with all this. You know, there's something that doesn't fit. Erica, every case you've worked on, you've hoped it had something to do with Scott's killer. It's that gleam in your eyes, and it's right there, right now. It isn't that. Davies had a bad feeling about it, and I agree. Well, you know what to do. Put your clues together. Go back to the crime scene. Pay a visit to Dr. Gallagher. See what surfaces. Meanwhile, you'll be here guarding the donuts. There's a bright side to everything, Mama said. But there's no donuts today, so I can't even have that small comfort. So I went to see that woman, Rose. And? Uh, I don't know. You know I hate that spooky shit, but she seemed to know something. You gotta deal with these flashes of yours now, before they seriously screw up your ability to do your job. I guess. How's the case going? It's going. Well, you know what to do. Put your clues together, go back to the crime scene, pay a visit to Dr. Gallagher, see what surfaces. Well, I guess I should get back to the case now. How are you feeling, kiddo? I'll survive. I'm gonna stop by Scott's grave today. Red, my mama always said, if it's meant to be... It'll happen. You know what pisses me off? Not that I haven't caught the killer, or that Davies closed the case, but the fact that there may be another pair of innocent suckers out there whose lives could be about to change forever because of this bastard. He's been quiet for three years. Maybe the guy died, who knows, had a heart attack. The guy was on fire last time anyone saw him, you know? Look, in any case, stop the whining and go do some work. You are better than that. Yeah, I'll catch you later.
Isn't it cozy here? The Erica! No McCoy today? Nope. All by myself. Ah, good. I can talk you up some romance then. Terrence, you're my one true love. Any luck identifying a guy? All the DNA strands I found were from the victim. Nothing from the killer. Not a drop of sweat? A hair? Nothing? <sighs> Nothing, man. This guy was clean, and I always find something. So they knew exactly what they were doing. What about our John Doe? It'll take a few days. You know how these things are. You'd think they'd come up with something faster. Call me if something comes up. Got it. So, how's life at the morgue? It ain't too different from when I had a team. No one speaks much. Only difference is that our zombies preferred to be in front of their computers with the lights off. <laughs> John says the same about me. I'm sure Gallagher is lovely to work with. <laughs> I keep getting on her nerves. <sighs> it's my new hobby. I need lockpicks. I'll need to see you. Put your thumb on your nose, waggle your fingers, and pat your tummy first. What? If you're going to ask for lockpicks, you really need to learn the thief sign, Biggie. What do I look like? The flea market? You're way better than a flea market. True that. Here, state of the art. Best line of lockpicks we have. Go and violate some human rights for me. I found something on that antique piece from last night. <laughs> Spill the beans. Apparently, it's a creepy toy from the 18th century, but it's been modified. So it wasn't something that was just laying around? No. It was very intentionally left there. Hmm. I won't confiscate it then. See what you can do with it. So this antique has apparently been broken into many different pieces. Didn't Davy send you something like this today? Yeah, I haven't ch- Oh, you mean the email she sent me this morning. Yeah, she mentioned something. Man, where's my head? Can I see it? I don't know. Davies will kill me. Come on, Terrence. This is important. <laughs> Tell you what, you scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours. What am I good for? Oh, it's just that... Gallagher's being a real pain in the butt about my equipment. I can't store it with hers because she doesn't want to. But then I have no other place to put it. And you want me to talk to Gallagher and see what I can do? You got it. See you later. Alligator! Agent Reed. Gallagher? How's the autopsy going? This is an interesting one. Have you found anything new? The subject was drugged. I found high doses of a substance in his body. Have you identified the substance? I've sent it to the lab. I'll have more info on it later. Is there anything you can tell me about it? It was probably used as a sedative. There are no signs of direct struggle, other than those of dragging the body. 
whatever contusions there are must have been caused by the friction of the skin with other materials, like when the killer raised the victim to the table. So it was a smaller person. Whoever did this definitely struggled with carrying the mass of this body. You are certain now that the victim was killed by strangulation? After close examination, strangulation was the catalyst. But the victim suffered both a heart attack and a hemorrhagic stroke. How exactly did that happen? The blood pressure progressively reached higher values. That, combined with a lack of oxygen, was a fatal combination that caused all regulatory systems of the body to fail. The brain and heart are only some of the organs that suffered massive damage. <sighs> How long did you say this process took? I would say between 45 minutes and an hour. Are we running tests to ID the victim? Yes, Agent Reed. I know how to do my job. We sent a dental and are running a DNA test. Weren't lucky with fingerprints? The fingers are extensively mutilated, but I will try to reconstruct it later and see if I can get a partial. That's gonna take more than a few days, isn't it? Indeed. How's life treating you, Gallagher? I'm down a secretary and down an assistant, and Terrence moved in upstairs. What do you think? Are they both gone permanently? At least until things turn around financially. That's too bad. I miss Susie. She was an excellent secretary. I hope I can hire her back someday. But right now, I'm busy, Agent Reed. Yeah, I'll leave you be. Terence mentioned something about wanting to use the storage? Yes, he's being a pest as always. Why won't you play nice? If he feels welcome, he'll never leave. And that would be unacceptable. So you won't reconsider about Terence using the storage? Without a direct order? No. Which you, of course, are not authorized to give me. Now can I get back to work? I'll be seeing you, Dr. Gallagher. Good luck, Agent Reed. Gallagher prefers her old-style tape recorder. Those two don't work together. I should take a picture of him. That should do. Anything else I should take a picture of? I wonder if it has any significance. Do you mind? Go ahead. His fingers have been skinned and mutilated. Whoever did this went to a lot of trouble to hide his identity from us. His fingers have been skinned and mutilated. Whoever did this went to a lot of trouble to hide his identity from us. What's this? This wound is recent. There's something not quite right here. Could it be a bone or something else? It doesn't feel like a bone. Agent Reed? I'm sorry. Hello, Dr. Gallagher. Agent Reed. Is there anything you can tell me about the tattoo? It's brand new. 24 hours old at most. Do you think it was the work of the killer? Given the estimated time of death, it's possible. It was completed within a few hours of the death at most. Hmm, I wonder if there's anything I can get from it. Have you checked this on the body already? I saw it, but I haven't opened it up yet. Will you? As you wish. Wow. 
Well, now that's unusual. What the hell? That looks like a piece of the antique I found at the scene. Seems somebody left you a clue. I think I'd best hand this over to you. Thank you. I'll look into it. Make sure that good-for-nothing Bowlby knows of its existence. I'll be seeing you, Dr. Gallagher. Good luck, Agent Reed. I wonder how these go together. There we go. Now what? The direct number for her office down here. I guess I better keep that in my cell phone now that Susie's gone. flowers. This is terrible, but no one will miss it, I hope. I forgot to bring him some flowers. Way to go, Erica. <laughs> hey, Scotty. How are you, baby bro? I'm sorry it's been a while. Oh, look at this place. It's a mess. Frickin' leaves are everywhere. I wish I could say I have a great lead on your case, but... Davies closed it. And there's nothing I can do about it. And this thing that I've got is still out of control. <sighs> How are you? How are things on the other side? <laughs> I'll come more often and I'll bring Dad next time. I promise. And I'll keep this promise. Excuse me. Yes? I don't mean to be rude, but you took the flowers from my brother's grave. Oh, I'm so... Uh, yeah, that, uh... <laughs> don't sweat it. I couldn't help but overhear what you were saying. You lost your brother too? Yeah. I'm wicked sorry. I'm Erica, and you are... Cordelia. I'm so embarrassed, Cordelia. I'll pay for a wreath. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, really. It was just funny. You were so natural at it. <laughs> Wait, what does that even mean? <laughs> so sneaky. Oh, yes, well, I'm known for that. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll be over there. Hey there. Hi, Erica. You look familiar to me. That wouldn't surprise me. I hang around here a lot. Sometimes I even sneak in at night. 
<laughs> really? Wow. That's... dedication. I take care of the family business. Max was an ace at it. He would always tell me what to do. So I still come here to talk to him. Or talk the issues through myself, I guess. I see you do the same with Scott. Is that... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be intrusive. Yes, yeah, Scotty. I don't come here as often as I would like, though. But I must have seen you here before. When did your brother die? About six years ago. Scotty died three years ago. Has it gotten better? A little. It's not so much the years that pass, but that you learn to accept it. And that's always the hardest part. Scotty was murdered. I'll only rest when I put whoever killed him behind bars. Are you a cop? FBI. And yeah, that's what makes it even harder to accept. I have to go now. Well, hey, you seem all right. If you ever want to hang out, you can probably find me around here. <laughs> I've never been asked to hang out in a cemetery before. Uh, maybe in high school. We can go somewhere else. You know, as morbid as it sounds, the cemetery is fine. We can be close to them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. It was nice meeting you. Hey, Erica, you dropped this. Rose? You know her? Yes. She took a lot of the pain away. Are you seeing her? I'm trying to figure out if I want to. You should. She's really something special. Hmm. Thanks. Dad decided we should bury Scott in the same place he died, instead of where Mom is buried. I never asked him why, but I didn't want to deny him anything. He was so broken. There you are, my dear. I'm not too thrilled about it, but yeah, here I am. Hey, Rose. Yes, my dear? I've had the time to think about last night. About this... thing of mine. Your vision, you mean? <laughs> How do you know about that? Many of my customers ask the same questions. You do not believe in the crystal ball, neither do some of them. Sometimes we mock what most haunts us. All right, I'm getting tired of this runaround. If you want me to be upfront with you, why don't we start by you telling me what you know, and then we can take it from there. Very well. What do you want to know? Until a few days ago, I seemed to have some control of it. But now, it's just, it's very painful now when I try to use it. Sometimes I see myself, things that haven't happened to me. Hmm. Is that bad? No. But I wonder, why is it happening? Before, you always saw the past? Yes. Maybe you are evolving. What? If you can see the past in ways no one else can, is it so strange that you should start seeing the future as well? That would be amazing. Has something happened to you recently? Something upsetting? My boss closed a case that I wasn't ready to close. Let us put this vision of yourself aside for now. Let us focus on your ability to see the past. Are you ready for some training with Mama Rose? What do you know about this stuff? You remind me of myself. I used to be as inquisitive as you are. I wanted to know it all. 
the very last detail of everything. And sometimes I asked more than maybe I should have. But I don't regret my life or the places it took me. This store here is living proof of where I've been and who I am. Are you going to answer my question? You are what some people call a scion. A what? A scion. Listen, I'm telling you what you want to know. But in return, I'm going to have to ask you to let go a wee bit, to hear the stories, to let me help. If you won't let me help, there's nothing I can do. I feel really uncomfortable talking about my visions. You have been using them, have you not? I have, but... So what is the big deal? This is something that you have. Embrace it fully, because it is a part of you, and it will not go away. I'm ready. Very well. Tell me how you use your power. I... I touch something, and it happens. Good. You are not afraid to use this power to your advantage. That doesn't make me feel like less of a freak. It is an amazing gift, my dear. Never forget that. Now I'm going to teach you a neat trick. I like to call this projection. With it, you will be able to extract the memories from a place to see the events from the time you wish. Places have memories? There's energy everywhere, my dear. When you learn how to tap onto it, well, there will be no one that can hide a secret from you. Now, we probably shouldn't be doing this, but what the heck? It'll be more interesting for you. Your friend Jean came here a long while ago. I want you to go back to one of the days he was here. For that, we're going to need something from him, a very personal item he holds onto all the time. The rest we will find here. So you want me to go get something personal from him? Something he would have carried three years ago. Won't this be fun? Yes, my dear. What is it that I need from John? Something personal. Something he would have carried three years ago. <laughs> so... Why did you decide to open an antique shop? I'm good at finding the rare and the strange. That certainly makes me feel better. The things in this shop are wonderful trinkets, full of mysticism and meaning. If you like something, you just have to ask. I'm gonna get going. Goodbye, my dear. These donuts look tasty. John would be all over them. Can I take one? Do me a favor, child, and take all of them. They're going to go to waste, and I hate throwing food away. Do you always have donuts for your customers? They used to love them, been doing it for years. But now, they're not as popular anymore. Makes me sad. I'd rather not unless there's a reason. The less we talk right now, the better.
No one's looking this way. I'm an ace at picking locks. Davies will be wicked pissed at me when she finds out I broke in. But whatever. I got a case to solve. Davies' promotions. I liked her more when she was one of us. We don't always see eye to eye on things, but she's still a good friend of the family. Information on some of our latest cases. That's Davy's favorite mug. She's always carrying it around, especially when she interrogates people. She named it Phoebe. Say goodbye to your badge, Erica. What's this? Another one will be hanged tonight. What did the rest of this say? That's from Davy's niece. <laughs> How cute. Davy's loves that child to pieces. Davy's left the top off. Was she trying to get something from here? Oh, crap. This isn't working. I need to get my visions under control somehow. Oh, crap. She's gonna skin me alive. Damn. What's the password? No. What could Davies have used as a password? All right, what do we have here? Interesting. Why did she keep this message? She deletes everything else. Terence, I sent you a piece of the antique that was sent to my office. If Reed comes by with the piece you say she found, make sure you get it from her. Call me right after. I don't have anything to tell him right now. Looks like I'm going for a new record on how many laws I can break today. Gallagher. I heard from Bulby that he's having problems with storing his equipment over there. Let him do what he needs. I need you to cooperate while the transition takes place. Davies. <laughs> Hope that sounds Davies enough. And sent. And delete. I'm not only walking into the lion's den here, I'm dancing the Lombardo with the freaking thing. The guy doesn't go anywhere without that thing. A present from his dad, or something like that. McCoy? Red? How's the case going? It's going. Well, you know what to do. 
Put your clues together, go back to the crime scene, pay a visit to Dr. Gallagher, see what surfaces. I'm going to go back to my work. Go get him, Red. John, can I borrow your lighter? Red, no one touches the lighter but me. Yeah, but it would really help me out. No. All right, John. I followed your advice yesterday, went to see Rose, sucked it up and cooperated. Now I need your lighter so that Rose can help me, and you are going to let me borrow it. Damn. You put it like that. Fine. Take it. Thank you, John. I'll bring it back. You better. Hello, Rose. Hello, my dear. I'm gonna get going. Goodbye, my dear. I found what we need. John never lets go of this. This is perfect. I will leave this here. Now. Let us start with this object alone. Close your eyes. Okay. I want you to picture every item in this place as if they were people, as if they had minds that contain memories. Concentrate on this room and this room only. I just... I don't... Concentrate. I'm trying, but... What's happening? What can you see? I can see this room, but I can... It's hard to explain. I see things that... Concentrate on those things. Now I want you to separate them and break them apart, one by one. I want you to single out the memories that were attached to Jean when he was here. How the hell do I do that? You will, with a bit of help from me. Your friend always sat by the crystal ball table, and there is a particular place in here he loved to hang around. <laughs> but you probably know what that is. For this to work, you need to focus on three things. The last being this item you brought from him. Focus on them. No, this isn't working. Concentrate, dear. John? Come on, child. Don't be scared. If you're seeing him, he's not fully real. But you can still interact with him, in a way. Sometimes that's what you do with these projections. Fill in the holes, you know? Other times, just seeing them will be enough for your goal. This is... As much as I hate to say it, this is pretty cool. Use it well, and never be afraid of it. Thank you, Rose. Talk to me, my dear. Let those nasty demons out. <sighs> Alice.
Alice left me. But it, it's good. I mean, I mean, she could be finally be happy. She's gone to her sisters. They're living their expensive McMansion. Ah, oh, Christ, I don't know how to be myself anymore. You know, the, the fat guy that eats the donuts and solves the case at the end of the day. Now I'm just going through the motions. But there are always demons that bite us and chew us and take our peace with the world away. But the human heart is big and noble, and yours is also kind and gentle. And it is in that strong heart of yours where you can always find yourself. There is this girl in the office. I was lucky to train her a couple of years back. Bright, smart, sharp, <laughs> kicks like a man, shoots better than any of the old farts in the station. Got it from her father. He was a captain of the BPD. Always made our lives easier. I knew her brother, too. Scott. Not made of the same stuff as Erica, but, but still a cool kid. <sighs> Last month, we lost him to a piece of shit murderer. The things that life gives us and the things that life takes from us, we have no control over those. We do with them what we can. Ah, bullshit! Scott should still be alive today. That kid didn't have to pay for our crap. He didn't deserve it, and neither did she. I was dumb to think I could pretend it was all fine. I guess it had to happen to her for it to hit me. Y you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I can tell you a thing or two about demons. How to face them, how to fight them. I've gotten people that have hit rock bottom to stand up firm and walk again. But this demon of yours, I cannot tell you what to do with it. That is up to you. I am sorry, my dear. So am I. So am I. All right, now that it's quiet, I should see if I can use these visions of mine to find more clues. Why is there just green paint here? left a message here. How can I look at it? Hmm. The color is green. Number GK4893. His mouth is very dry from the hanging. Come on, tell me who you are. If I could only see what you saw. If I could only see what you saw. The stuff on this shelf has been gathering cobwebs for a while.
Erica, <laughs> what did you do? What do you mean? Gallagher just came here all crazy and shit a second ago saying how there's no respect for her department. Now she can't wait to see the day when I'm finally out of here. <sighs> then she said I could store my stuff with her equipment. <laughs> crazy, huh? Well, I have my ways. Where's that antique piece you promised? Here you go. Thank you. I need to go all James Bond. Biggie, you're the Bond, I'm the Q. What are your techie needs? At the crime scene, I found this graffiti that was recently painted. I want to see whatever it covered. I got just what you need. Take a look at this. Bada boom ding dang. It works like an ultraviolet light, only you can actually choose the color of light to cast and it'll see through that color revealing whatever's behind it. You know, like those hint books from those old PC adventure games. Oh, that sounds pretty neat. Not only that, you can also use it as a projector. Just plug it into your computer and transfer an image to it. You'll be able to project that image onto anything. What would I do without you? You'd be in a cave, crying yourself to sleep. What does the gadget do again? It works like an ultraviolet light, only you... See you later. Alligator. I wonder how these go together. There we go. Now what? Hmm. The color is green. Number GK4893. I don't think I'm doing this the right way. I need to calibrate it to what I need. I need to enter some sort of code here. The pipes go to other areas of the building. I need to enter some sort of code here. If your eyes could see what mine can't, what does that mean?
If I could only see what you saw. Wait, the message. What is he looking at? What's this? There's a photo inside. What do we have here? A photo? Who's leaving these and who are you? I'm going to email a digital picture of this to my computer so I can look at it later. I wonder who she is. Not all hangings are suicide victims. Hmm, what could this mean? Let's see if this works. Another one will be hanged tonight. When will you see the signs? I've left something for you at the post office on Milk Street. Maybe it'll open your eyes. Ask for Joey to help you. People actually still use regular mail. In the latest statistics the department got, email usage outnumbered snail mail 80 to 1. But that was still 177 billion pieces of mail sent. What can I say? I'm a dork for statistics. His name tag says Joseph. Hello there. I'm here to retrieve a package. Name, please. Davies. Madison Davies. One second. Oh, uh, do you have your ID with you? I'm Special Agent Erica Reed, FBI. I need that package. It may provide clues to an ongoing investigation. 
It was sent to my boss, and I'm here to retrieve it for her. Oh, uh... Sure. Thank you. Do you know who sent the package? The package? Yes, this package. Um... Uh, no, there, there's no sender info. Are you sure? Uh, well, just that it's postmarked from another Boston office. Uh, sorry. If you find out anything else about it, please call this number. Uh, will do. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Sorry, Agent. This must be important. What does this open? These look like pieces of the same picture. Who is this person? These look like pieces of the same picture. Who is this person? Hmm. This must be important. Ugh, no thanks. All right, I got the woman's photo here. Now let's see what I can find. All right, I should look for any details that can tell me who this woman is. Hmm, what is that on her bracelet? Her name? Sarah. All right, I should be able to use that if I want to cross-reference it with something. The case database. I can access closed and current cases here. This is her, the woman from that picture. Let's see... I remember a little about this case. Davies and Sully handled it. Hmm... And she was buried at Mount Auburn Cemetery. Same as Scott. One evidence form coming up. Exactly what it says. A people search. I don't need to request any evidence right now. No known current address. I should see if I can speak to this guy.
Let's see what this gets me. I have a request for you. Yeah? I'm looking for some evidence on a case from a couple of years back. Well, aren't you in luck? We just moved archives from the past three years back here. Anything further back, uh, it'll be a nightmare. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be around. Do you have your evidence form? Here you go. All right, just one minute. There are more tapes, but this was all I could find. Okay, thank you. Hey, Erica. Hey, Gwen. Do you have anywhere I can play this tape you gave me? Oh, shoot, no. I'm sorry. None of that stuff has been moved. And since we've gone digital now, nobody's really worrying. <sighs> yeah. Well, at least we're out of the prehistoric period. But that leaves you in a pickle now. Sorry. Thank you, Gwen. Anytime. Hey, Sully. So, you change your mind about lunch? No. I need to ask you something. What is it? I found your name on a case and I need details. You remember anything about Sarah Goodman? How can I forget? That was my first case, when McAdams was still in charge. I took the case with Davies. Why did the FBI take the case? Because of the husband. He refused to believe it was a suicide. He had some important and powerful friends, and we got pulled into it. How did it go down? Uh, the husband had left for a business trip. He was always abroad. When he came back this time, he found his wife hanging in their condo and immediately notified the police. How did the case get handed off to the FBI? The detective on the case immediately ruled it a suicide. The husband made some calls, and before you know it, Davies and I were driving to the scene. So you were there at the crime scene? Yeah, it was wicked awful. The woman had been dead for a while. <laughs> Nothing like that for your first real case. Not that it was much of a case, or so Davies thought. So the husband, this Robert Goodman, he was cleared of all charges? He was abroad on a business trip. We checked, and his story cleared. He was very disturbed. Nobody's that good an actor. Do you know where I can find him now? Uh, as it happens, yeah. I saw him not long ago. He's, uh, he's on the streets. He is? Yeah, here's the saddest part of the story. He never gave up on the case. He obsessed over it, quit his job, spent all of his money, lost his home, and it drove him mad. I dealt with him a lot of times when he would come here to beg for us to reopen the case, saying he had new proof. So that's who that was. I remember seeing him a few times, yeah. Did you ever look at this new evidence? Briefly. He went on about the possibility of someone having done this to others. But Davy said we'd be wasting our time, and really, there was nothing concrete. As for where you can find him, he hangs out around Shafta Avenue in Dorchester. I'll send the exact location to your phone. Who closed the case? Davies. We did our due research. Interrogated Robert Goodman. But there was nothing pointing at murder. We talked to several family members who knew Goodman's wife. They had moved to the city recently from some suburb in California because of the husband's work. What did the relatives say? The, the victim was on antidepressants. They'd been living here for a little less than a year, and she wasn't coping well with the move. It all pointed to suicide. So, uh, what's your interest? I need to look at a couple of things before I can say. I may need your help on this. Anything you need, Erica. Thank you, Jared. See you later, Sully. Yeah.
McCoy? Red? I found something interesting in Davy's office. Reed, tell me you didn't sneak in there. Relax. Listen to this. Davy's got a fax yesterday. It mentioned someone was going to be hanged before the killing. So that's why she brought us in. The message also points to a package left in the post office for Davies. Davy shredded the message. It must not have been fully shredded because later she pulled it and saved what was left. But why didn't she just mention this last night? She's walking on eggshells, and last time we cracked one, a lot went wrong. But we have a killer on the loose. She should have told us everything. You don't know everything that's happened around here, Red. Trust me on this, kiddo. I'm going to call her. I tried earlier. She didn't pick up. I found something really interesting. Yeah? Whoever did this left clues behind that are pointing to another old case. Go on. Well, here's the thing. This other case? It was a hanging too, but it was closed as a suicide. Apparently the husband insisted it was a murder. What do you think? I need to gather more info. Keep me posted. I'm going to go back to my work. Go get him, Red. Buddy? Yo! See you later. Alligator! Gallagher prefers her old-style tape recorder. Agent Reed, what are you doing? Stop messing with my equipment. I was wondering if I could borrow your tape recorder. No, you can't. It'll only be a minute. I said no. Buddy? Yo! I could use your help with Gallagher. What do you want me to do? You said your new hobby is to get on Gallagher's nerves. Can I see you in action? That would make my day. Wait two minutes and then meet me at the morgue. Hello, Dr. Cadaver. Anything up? Bulby, what a surprise. I was just thinking about you. My pet cockroach just died, and I wanted you to run an autopsy. Oh, my lord. Please, it's very important. I'm very sentimental about it. Bulby, you should go back to your hole upstairs before I make you part of my job. Uh, I'm sure I could liven things up around here. I'm past...
buddy. Yo! What does the gadget do? It works like... See you later. Alligator! All right, plugged in. October 12th, 2008. Recordings of case 342980, Sarah Goodman's death. Mr. Goodman, can you recall the events of the last time you saw your wife? It was last Wednesday. I had to leave again for a business trip. What do you do, Mr. Goodman? I'm the vice president of a goods export company. My job involves a lot of travel. Did your wife approve of your lifestyle? No, Sarah was never happy about it, especially after we moved to Boston. We lived in a small town in California, but with the promotion, I had to move to the headquarters. Did your wife have any friends or acquaintances? No, Sarah was very lonely. Was she depressed? Where are you going with this? Please answer the question. Yes, Sarah was on antidepressants, but she would have never done this to herself. Mr. Goodman, let's go back to that last meeting with her. Was your wife upset that night? Our anniversary was last Wednesday. She was sad I was going to spend another one away, so we had dinner at our favorite restaurant. I had to leave from there, so we walked to the closest train station. I looked at my cell phone when I was leaving, and I told her it was our time. <laughs> Inside joke. I handed her a note. The note, sir. Damn. What would I need to reenact that time? Hello. I I'm looking for Robert Goodman. Do you know where I can find him? Who's looking for him? I'm Special Agent Erica Reed, FBI. Can you point me to Robert Goodman? That would be me, Agent. What do you want? You were married to Sarah Goodman, is that correct? What about Sarah? I'm conducting an investigation on her death, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. I was wondering if you can come with me to the station. I'm sorry, but that's a part of my past I'd rather not relive. It would really help if you came to the office with me. No can do. I am fine where I am right now. How could I convince him? Is this Sarah? Oh, Sarah. Yes, this is her. I don't remember when we took this picture. Mr. Goodman, I know this is difficult for you. I've read your file. I know what happened. There's new information on this case. I believe we may be dealing with a killer. There are others out there whose lives could depend on your help. Will you please come with me? I'll come with you, Agent Reed. But I'm not sure I can be of any help. Okay. Robert is in the interrogation room. I need to tell John. McCoy? Red? I've brought Robert Goodman with me. He's the husband of that other victim I told you about. Good. Do you want a good cop, bad cop him? No. Let me handle this one. 
All right, let's go. I'll watch from outside. I heard you have Robert Goodman here. Yeah. You know, Erica, let the kid handle it with you. This was his case, after all. Plus, Sully can do some good grilling. So you're determined to keep your lazy ass attached to your desk for the whole day? Nah, I think you should go, McCoy. This is your case now. So who do you want, Erica? Let's go, John. I want to do this on my own. Go ahead, Red. McCoy? Red? Go ahead, Red. All right, Mr. Goodman? I'm only here because of what you showed me. I know. And I wouldn't have brought you here if this wasn't important. Oh, I'm not talking. I'm not comfortable. How can I make you feel better? I'm a little hungry. Robert, please stay here. I have to get something done. Don't take long. John, I need to take care of something. Keep an eye on the guy. He won't be going nowhere. Well, maybe it'll help. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> Works every time. I'm not that hungry. Something lighter, maybe. Yeah, good. How about something sweet? Th 
thank you. So will you help me now, Mr. Goodman? Call me Robert. Thank you. Your wife, Sarah. Beautiful woman. Very kind. She didn't deserve what happened to her. You don't believe she committed suicide? I didn't believe it was possible at the time. There's new information, and... I've spent a long time trying to convince you people she hadn't killed herself. But that was such a long time ago. Sir, I'm a firm believer that it's never too late for justice. We may have made a terrible mistake. Yeah, tell that to Agent Davies and Agent McAdams. Are they listening? Agent, those still are very painful memories to me. I'll help you. But I don't see the point in all of this anymore. Sarah is gone, and that's something that will never change. Did you or your wife have any enemies? Anyone who might have wanted to kill her? You already have all that information in your case files. Do you have any new information or not? Do you know this man? Oh, that's horrible. Why are you showing this to me? Trust me, I wouldn't show you if I didn't need to. We found him dead last night. Wait. That's... I do know that man. Do you know his name? Yes, of course. He... Uh, I don't... I don't remember. Anything that you can help with. Where do you know him from? Anything? I'm sorry, Agent. I just... I don't remember. I don't have a reason to do that now. All right. I should be able to get into his memories. But first, I need to find a way so that he'll let me touch him. What are you doing? Don't touch me. I'm sorry. I need to get him to stay put. Robert, please stay here. I have to get something done. Don't take long. I wonder if I can find Sarah's grave here. Sarah, where are you? Sarah, where are you? Sarah Goodman, here you are. I'm not too sure what I'm expecting to find here. What is this? Could this have belonged to Sarah?
Oh, God. She was murdered. Poor woman. I better leave her be. It was embarrassing enough already. This necklace. My lord. I haven't seen that thing in ages. It belonged to my wife. May I? It was an anniversary gift. Where did you find it? I visited her grave. I used to do that, religiously, day after day, and until I just stopped. It's a thing of beauty. Just like she was. Robert, please, try to remember. I'm sorry, Agent. I just... I don't remember. Robert, I need you to think back and look for the name of this man in the picture. I'm trying. I'm remembering the last time I met with my wife. He came up in that conversation. I just can't remember well... The details are... Uh, Robert, please try to think back to that moment. Have you ever lost someone you love, Agent? Do you want to hold on to the memories for as long as you can? But they dissipate through the years. And then all you're left with are the fragments, small moments. I've tried for too long to hold on to a ghost, and it didn't get me anywhere. Now I don't want to remember. Robert... I know exactly what it is to lose someone you love. I lost my brother to a murderer. And I know what it is to chase ghosts too. But there is a real chance here that if you're right, if your wife was indeed murdered, we may find this person. So please, help us. It was the last time we met. We were at a train station. I was about to leave on a business trip, again. Sarah was sad. She didn't want me to go. She hated this town. I can't make anything out of this. My visions are too confused. Maybe I should pay Rose a visit. Robert, please stay here. I have to get something done. Don't take long. Thank you. 
Hello, Rose. Hello, my dear. So what is it that I need to do to use that projection trick you taught me? Focus on three things in the room that are related to the incident you want to remember. And voila, it is that easy. How are you doing, my dear? How's that case you were asking about last night? I'm having some issues with it. It's something maybe you could help me with? Tell everything to Mama Rose. I'm talking to this man. I need to help him remember something. I can see his memories, somehow, but there are pieces that are missing, things he can't recall. People sometimes bury details, but you'd be surprised how much they can remember if pointed in the right direction. Like when the sweet smell of a bakery reminds you of Mom's delicious baked goods. Mmm. Right. But how can I figure what will trigger him to remember? But you can do much more than just that. You can see what they think they have forgotten. He's a little twitchy already. If I start telling him this stuff... That is not the way to go about it. You can use your own mind to help them without pronouncing a single word. Think of it as a kind of regression. Regression? How? Is there anything in particular you want to remember, my dear? Sometimes I wish I could go back to the time when... when my brother was killed. Oh, my dear. Are you sure this is something you want to do? It can be very damaging to your soul, a thing like that. I went to the cemetery today, and something's been bugging me ever since. I can't put my finger on what, so I'd like to try to remember. As you wish, I will be here to help you. Close your eyes. Go back to that moment, that day. Remember what happened. I can see him, but I can't quite remember. What is fuzzy to you right now? It's silly, but I can't remember the color of his jacket. What else? I don't know if he was calm or angry or sad. I can't remember. I always see him angry at me. Angry at... Try to remember what it really was, not the memory you've painted since. Tell me when you are ready, my dear. I think I got it. Now focus again. Focus on the actual regression and finish that memory you have just manipulated back into what it was. Are you okay? I'm fine. Cordelia? Who? Someone I met today. She knows you. I stole a flower from her brother's grave. <laughs> I'm such a horrible person. Who does that? What kind of a person forgets to bring flowers to her brother and steals them from another grave? <laughs> calm down, my dear. He was calm, Scotty. He had this expression on his face. He knew he would die, and he such a calm expression for my sake. He knew I had failed. 
but you are still trying, my dear. And he knows that. Wherever he is, he knows that. Okay, let's see what I can make of this. Sarah was a very beautiful woman. So sad. I can't figure out what color dress she was wearing. Do you remember what color dress she was wearing that day? Why are you asking me these questions? It could help you remember details. I can't remember. He took a picture of her. Maybe this could help trigger more memories. What were you doing before you left? Did you have your cell phone with you? Did you receive any calls? I... yes, I did. And I took a picture of Sarah. What did you do after? I sent it to my sister. I don't know how this is of any help. Trust me, it is. There's a text message from Karina. Hmm... What's your sister's name? Karina. I haven't seen her since... well... Did she reply to that picture you sent her? Yes. She... she commented on... She said she loved the color of the dress because it was her favorite color. What is that? Blue. Karina's favorite color is blue. It was our mother's favorite color as well. What was your wife's dress color again? Blue. It was blue. Robert, I want you to listen to this and tell me if it brings back any memories. Mr. Goodman, let's go back to that last meeting with her. Was your wife upset that night? Our anniversary was last Wednesday. She was sad I was going to spend another one away, so we had dinner at our favorite restaurant. We had to leave from there, so we walked to the closest train station. I looked at my cell phone when I was leaving, and I told her it was our time. <laughs> Inside joke. I handed her a note. The note, sir. Any information you can give me from here? The time. 
9.30 p.m. It was something that Sarah and I always remembered from some date we had when we started going out. That was the time that night. Yes. What about the note? What did the note say? I don't remember. Don't you wish sometimes we could go back in time? I would have never left her that night. What would I need to reenact that time? October 2008. This should help me figure out what I need. How can I find the date? How can I find the time? Do you remember the date when this happened? No, I don't. Sorry, Agent. Can you remember the time when you last met your wife? The time. 9.30 p.m. It was something that Sarah and I always remembered from some date we had when we started going out. That was the time that night. Yes. They made a nice couple. What station were they at? Is this a note? Maybe I can make him remember it. Robert, you mentioned the last time you saw your wife was at a train station. Can you remember what station it was? Oh gosh. I don't remember what station it was, but I do remember I took her to a Thai restaurant on Boylston Street. Her favorite place. They have the best chicken curry in town. We went to the closest station on our way back. Do you remember the name of the restaurant? No. I'm sure I could remember if I hear the name. This should help. Did you give her something that day? Anything? Yes. In fact, I did. A note. What did the note say? I... I don't remember. It was... I saw her opening the note as the tea pulled away. What do we have here? What did the note say? I need to gather more info. My visions are too confused. What about the note? What did the note say? I'm sorry, Agent. I just... I don't remember. Okay, let me look for that restaurant's name to help Robert. There we go. This should help Robert.
Okay. Robert, tell me if any of these ring a bell. Pad Thai. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Fusion noodles. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Basil leaf. No, doesn't ring any bells. Ginger and basil. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Curry Palace. Yes, the Curry Palace. That's the one. Okay, we're making progress. Robert, please stay here. I have to get something done. Don't take long. McCoy? Red? I need to know what that damn note says. Wouldn't your power help you? No, it doesn't. Unless... Unless I reenacted whatever happened back then. Go ahead, Red. This is a crazy idea, but let's see if it works. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll give it a try. This is obviously a suicide. At least it will pass as one. We don't have time to deal with this. Don't you want to investigate further? When you've been on the force as long as I have, you'll learn to pick the big cases from the ones that'll only suck up your resources and not go anywhere. We'll talk more outside. 
Do you remember any other details? Oh, Sarah was romantic. She liked nice dinners with candles and having a song that was just for us. That night I handed her a note. The note said, uh, well, it was something from a song called The Taking from Scarlet Furies. She told me several times that it was our song. So I wrote her something from those lyrics. I wish I'd paid attention to that stuff when it mattered. That's not the song I'm looking for. Oh, this is it. This is the song. The Taking by the Scarlet Furies. This is it. This is the song. The Taking by the Scarlet Furies. Sorry. I thought I had set this to vibrate. That... What about it? That oh, the note I wrote her had a phrase from that song. And though the rest I'm bound to lose, the one thing I'll take with me is you. This is strange. It's a great song. And maybe it's a sign. I really do think I can help you, Robert. What was that phrase you wrote to your wife again? And though the rest I'm bound to lose, the one thing I'll take with me is you. I remember now. I remember clearly. I took a picture of Sarah before we walked down to Copley Station. Sarah had that look on her face. I knew exactly what it was. God, this station is dirty. They need the janitor from our station. What's his name again? Mr. Longmore. Anthony. Anthony, yes. He's a nice man. Yeah, he's one of the only friends I have. You have to make an effort to like this city. It feels like our life is a long string of goodbyes. And hellos? Sarah, you know this is what I do for a living. Here, I wrote this for you. I could only find a napkin. I love you, Sarah. Your train is here. I'll be back before you know it. That was the last time I ever saw her alive. After I found her hanging in our apartment. My job, none of it made sense anymore. You have your name now. Am I free to go, Agent Reed? Robert, I'm going to do my best to get to the bottom of this. Oh, thank you, for Sarah's sake. You're a kind woman. I know it's none of my business, but you mentioned a brother who'd been murdered. Whatever happened to him, let it go. Don't end up where I did.
Way to go, kiddo. Go search that name. I'll give the man a ride. Thanks. Have you seen any good memories lately? I have one for you. Search for Amy Lewis. I'm sure it'll ring a bell or two. Oh. Who the hell is sending me these? Anthony Longmore worked for the tea. This is our guy. Another hanging, ruled as a suicide, but I have a feeling it's another murder. I'll have to check on this case later. For now, I'll focus on the Goodman case. Who's sending me these messages? McCoy? Red? Do you have an address? Yeah, heading there now. Coming? Ah, <laughs> no. Too many donuts. You take Sully with you. <laughs> Great. What? He worked on the case. Did he put you up to this? Ain't Cupid a fat ass too? I just got a message in my phone pointing me to another victim. Another girl found hanged in her house two years ago. So what's on your mind? I think we're looking at a serial killer. The real question is why would the killer change his patterns all of a sudden? What do you mean? His previous victims passed as suicides. This was an obvious murder. Guy got tired of dancing and wants to get caught? I don't know. This seems too complicated in a way. It seems almost like a game. It's not common, but... Killers do change M.O. from time to time. Maybe. I'm going to go back to my work. Go get him, Red. Hey, Sully. Hi, Erica. I need you to come with me. Lunch? 
Would you drop it with that damn lunch? We got work to do. I thought you didn't want me to come with you. Well, yeah, I do now. Hurry up before I change my mind. I got the keys from the landlord. Two points for diplomacy. Hey, you know me. I'm a charmer. He mentioned that Longmore was going to move out at the end of the month. What are we looking for? Anything that can tell us why this guy was killed. Sully, I need to go check on some things. Can you meet me back here later? Sure. Doesn't seem used much. He must get a lot of takeout. Tacky. Found something? Maybe. Let me get down there for you. <laughs> Always a gentleman. All right, give me some time to go through this. Fingerprint bypass. <laughs> what do I do now? Okay, let's try this. There we go. Who the hell is sending me these? This guy again. Who the hell is he? Samuel Sewell was one of six judges that sentenced 19 men and women in the Salem Witch Trials in Salem, Massachusetts. Of all the judges, he was the only one who later repented, taking all of the blame and shame for the sins he had committed by sentencing the innocent people to death by hanging. The case of Judge Sewell provides a very interesting view on how the power of governmental agencies can, if abused, act against the same people who elected them and whom they are sworn to protect. Had Samuel Sewell and his fellow judges investigated the cases further, and not opted for superstitious view, the whole tragedy could have been averted. A memory card? Okay. What's the combination to this thing?
What is all that? Let's look at it. This file has info on three different women, all from Memphis. And things in here. A candy wrapper, a few long strands of hair, a long handwritten dialogue between one of the women and someone else. The women's names are Carolyn Palmer, Mega Martha, and Beth Williams. This is our guy, Longmore. So he's kept a file on himself? Let's see. Looks like he worked in public transportation in New York and Memphis. He was charting his weight every few days. He has a detailed account list of all the movies he's seen this year, and women he noticed while in the theater. There are three women profiled in this folder, all from New York. It's full of little notes, shopping habits, places where they ate, clothes they wore most frequently. The three women's names are Janelle Katona, Emily Carlson, and Nadia Schwartz. I'll look at those other cases in more detail later. I want to focus on the case at hand, and I think I have all the info I need with the Boston profiles. Damn it, this was right under my nose. Sarah Goodman, Amy Lewis, and Elizabeth Bauer. I know Sarah and Amy, so does that mean that Elizabeth was already... Ugh, damn it. She was before Sarah. There are notes in here on them, tons of details. Today, I brushed up so close I was able to smell her. What? What is this? Elizabeth, it looks like Longmore had a pretty detailed fantasy life with you. Lots of notes on it. He knew where you lived, too. Hmm. 730 Joy Street. Looks like he tracked you for some time, Amy. Address is at 1170 Melrose. This is the one that's not a surprise. Sarah, murdered in her house at 514 Chestnut Street. Oh, maybe I'm just exhausted right now, but sometimes this shit gets to me. Sully, call someone in the department and find more on these women. You got it. Hey, Martin. Yeah, I need you to look a few things over for me. Yeah, I have a couple of names for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right, okay, the first one. Okay, we got some info here. These women were all suicides, except for Emily Carlson in New York. They never caught the killer, but it was an obvious murder. The third woman in New York, Nadia Schwartz, hasn't been reported as missing or dead. Sully, Anthony Longmore was a killer. You think? What's our evidence? Those women from the safe are his victims. He took those photographs. And he's been doing it for years, until someone stopped him last night. He was in Tennessee first, and then in New York. He killed these women, and he had a pattern. He kills in groups of three. How do you know? Two reasons. He was moving out soon, and... He's killed three victims in every state except for New York. Look at the boxes. You mentioned the landlord said he was moving out. He was done here, ready to go on to the next city. He killed in threes all the time. But what happened in New York? Why is Nadia Schwartz still alive? Because of Emily Carlson's case. They almost caught him. He fled New York before his work was done there, and he could never get to Nadia Schwartz. It's clear, even the way he met his victims. How? He met them through public transportation. He worked there. That's where he targeted his victims. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. But if this piece of shit was murdered last night, done in the same way that he killed his victims, then who killed him? Good question. And why did they send clues to Davies? And to me? <sighs> this is a hell of a mind screw. We gotta keep looking. It's a bunch of tools, lots of rope, and get this, even some nooses. I also found this. Hello, hello. I've been looking for you. Good job, Sully. I got it. It's all together now. There are some letter sliders here. There's a question. Who repented? I can't move him. What am I missing? There we go. I should be able to move the letters now. Creepy. Huh. What's this? It's a memory card. Let's see what happens. What game do you want me to play now? Hey. Isn't that... You got it. The Old South Meeting House? Yeah. What's that got to do with anything? Sully, look at this. Over three centuries ago, Samuel Sewell repented in the Old South Meeting House for atrocities he once helped along. Tonight, someone new will take the blame and shame. There's something loading. As long as it's not a bomb. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> Drop it, you ass. We make a good team, don't we? Shit! Sully, it's Davies! She's a target! What the fuck? How do you know? I, I got Trust me on this. We gotta get to the meeting house now. Move it. Pulling in right now. Erica, wait for backup. John, Davies could be in there. Did you try her phone? She's not picking it up. No one's heard from her all day. Get 
Get your ass here quick. We're pulling in. I'm on my way. What's the plan? Check out the bell tower out front. I'll head into the main building hall from the side door. Be careful. You too. gun back a wall plug construction stuff construction stuff a virtual present damn presented thing gave me up Do it. Let's try this. Hard 
starting to think there is no not messed up in my life. The top brass says go. You don't ask questions. Just finding him isn't good enough. I found Scott, I found Davies, and I was too late to save either of them. Please, just talk to me, Dad. Wise Monkey is your case now, Agent Reed. Let's see what you 